Hi again. So we're gonna um had a few questions about the histograms and um, the density scale uh, from chapter three. So I thought I'd go over quickly a problem with that to try to show you how to set up a histogram and then also why the density scale, how to use a density scale, and why that's the appropriate um, thing to use. Why why you do that rather than using uh, street population or percentage. So what I've got here is that I've got an example of, imagine that you have a program that has 80 students enrolled in it, okay? And um, the, eight, the 80 students are broken down by age category. So I've got 18 through 27, 28 through 37, 38 through 47, 48 through 57, 58 through 67, 68 through 77. And here are the numbers. So there's 20 students that are between 18 and 27 enrolled in the program, and 36 are between 28 and 37, and so on. So 20, 36, 12, 8, 3, 1. Okay? And hopefully I've created that so that it actually adds to 80. Let's double check that. 56, 66, 68, 76, 79, 80. Okay? So, so now we're set up. So let's talk about their percentages, the percentages in each category, right? So to find the percentage in each category, um, we're going to divide each number by 80 and then multiply by 100. Right, so 20 over 80 is a quarter times 100 is 25 percent. So 25 percent of the 80 students are between 18 and 27. 36 divided by 80 over 100 works out to you can check it 45 percent. Um, 12, well, 12 is a third of 36, right? So the percentage should be a third, so it should be 15 percent. So far, we're up to. Uh, We've got 60, 85 percent of the students are between 18 and 47. If you want. All right, and then um, 48 through 57, eight. What percent of 80 is eight? 10 percent. That's right. And then three. Uh, well, three out of 80 uh, is 3.75 percent, and one out of 80 is 1.25 percent. So that's 5, 15, 30, plus 70 is 100 percent. So that's all good. All right. So now, so now let's make a histogram. And in some sense, in this particular case, it doesn't matter whether I do a histogram by number or percent, which is not what's advised. It, in some sense, it doesn't matter because the picture will be right, um, or percent density. Right, the density scale. But it, but we're going to muddle with this example a little bit and create a situation where it does matter, and it matters a lot. Okay, so let's create a histogram for this. Um, and we won't worry too much about what this left-hand scale means yet. Okay, we'll just say we're not being specific about that, and then we'll talk about uh, what it what it needs to mean for it to work in more general cases. So I'm going to have six equally space. One, two, three, four, five, six uh, data ranges there. And then, so the first one is, well, if I made it by number, it would be 20 high. If I made it by percent, it would be 25 high. Let's just put it there. Okay. And then the next one is almost twice that, right? 36 is almost twice 20. 45 is almost twice 25. So the next bar is going to be almost twice as far. I'm being pretty approximate here. And I'm not paying any attention at all to what the scale is, but we'll talk about that. Don't you worry. So that's about that high. And then um, the next one is a third of the last one. So, well, that would be about that high. Um, and does that look right? Yeah, it's about right for the relationship between 12 and 22. Um, the next one's two-thirds of that. Why? Because uh, 10 is two-thirds of 15, or 8 is two-thirds of 12, right? And then the next one is going to be a little less than half of that, and the next one will be a third of that. So there's a histogram. And what this, basically, the goal here, and here's where, where it's going to start to matter what scale we use. The goal here is to make, because this is our, and this is just a physiological fact, or, or, or a psychological fact, I guess. Our eyes read the size of these bars by their area. And so the goal to make our eyes do the right thing and our brain do the right thing is to make the area equal to the thing we want to measure. All right, 
what's the thing we want to measure? Well, the thing we want to measure is either the number of students or if the percent. So let's say it's the percent, okay? It doesn't matter. Either one would do. But let's say that what we want to measure is the percent, all right? So then this height, this area should be 25%. This area should be 45%. So that means if this length here is 10 years long, and it is because 28 minus 18 is 10. So if this length is 10 years long, then that means this has to be, the height has to be, think about the units, it has to be 2.5 percentage points in every year. In other words, what that really means is that 2.5, we expect if people were distributed equally in those 10 years, that there would be 2.5 18-year-old percent of the population would be 18-year-olds, two of these students. 2.5% of the population, two students would be 19-year-olds, and so on. Okay, so that's sort of assuming that this is a flat bar the way we've depicted it. Now, it may not be, but that's sort of our best assumption. So what we're saying is that we're making the area here 25%. This is 10 years here, and so this is a percentage density scale is 2.5 percentage points per year. That's what is going here. So this would be 4.5 percentage points per year. This would be 3.6, 1.2, uh, sorry, 1. Point, sorry, I jumped to the wrong uh, label. 2.5, 4.5, 1 1.5, 1.375, 0.125. Okay? So that would be what the scale was. And that's called a a density scale. Okay? Now, if you're observant, you'll probably say, why does that matter? Why does it matter that I use a density scale? I could just say this is 25% high here, and this is 45% high here, and so on, and I'll get the same graph. It'll just have a different left-hand axis scale. So why does that matter at all? And the answer is it doesn't matter for this question, but it does matter if you have categories that are not the same size. Well, let me show you what I mean. If, in, if I hadn't asked the question by 10-year slots, but if instead if I I'd had one category for 48 through 77, right, I figured, well, so I don't ask this part. I just say you're either 18 through 27, 28 through 37, 38 through 47, or 48 through 77, okay? If I only asked it that way, then I would have got not these numbers, but this number, a 12 here. Okay? Everyone agree? Because I'd have 8 plus 3 plus 1 in that category, which is 12. Okay? Now, if I was... If I were uh, doing this by strict percentages, look what would happen to my graph. Let me see if I can find that orange piece of chalk I was using in another lecture. There it is. Um, 12 is right here. So the graph would look like that. Right? So imagine if I graphed it just by strict percentages. Well, 12 by 12 students, or 15%, is right here. That doesn't give the right picture. That makes it look like there's all these students who are over 40, who are 48 or over. But there aren't. So it's giving us the wrong picture. If you looked at a graph that looked like this, you'd say, hey, look how many students we have up there. Older students. Whoa, we should be catering to those. We should be doing things about that. There's so many older students. But that's a misrepresentation of the data, right? So how do we fix that? Well, we go to percentage density. Because now, this category here, there certainly is 12 or 15 percent of the students in it, but the density is, since it's 30 long, right, 77 minus, uh, 77 minus 47 is 30, so the density is going to be 15 percent divided by 30, or half a percent per year. So half a percent per year is way down, and what, where is half a percent per year? Well, half a percent per year um, is comparable to if you'd had a five here, right? So that means 
uh, here with a 10, so it'll be half that middle one. So that'll be half this one. So it would be right, so instead of that crazy big block there, we'll get a block that looks like that. Much more reasonable. Uh, really, that doesn't look quite right either. What am I doing wrong? So I've got 15% over 30 years. That's half a percent per year. So that's course, that, oh, half of this one is actually up there. That's why. My picture is just bad. So it would look like that. Now that looks much more like what the data should be there. That gives you a much more realistic idea of what the amount of students in that age bracket really would be, rather than this crazy idea that you get if you use strict percent. Okay? So that's why you want to go to a percentage density. Okay? All right. Hopefully that helps. If it uh, if it doesn't, um, I can certainly answer questions about it.